the economy of Nagaland at present revolves around agriculture and services, in which government services have the largest share. In the state DGP in 2021-22, services contributed 61% and agriculture 27%. The contribution of manufacturing activities in which construction is actually has a major share is only 12% at present. The per capita income in Nagaland, as you would know, is about $2,000 at a GSDP of 32,424 crore. We are in the fourth position in terms of literacy in the northeast region and our literacy rate is slightly above the national average. We have a large young workforce and around 6,000 6, to 7,000 students graduate every year. English being the official language and the medium of instruction in schools and colleges, the young population in Nagaland is equipped in soft skills having special talent in creative arts like music and singing and with potential for high level productivity. This greatly enhances the position of the state as an attractive location for development and growth of businesses, industry and related services. Nagaland is richly endowed with fertile land, community managed forests, abundant mineral wealth and skilled human resources. 70% of the state's population is engaged in agriculture. Since the inception of the state, agriculture has made significant progress in terms of production and productivity of food grains from 61,000 metric ton in 63-64 to 7.5 lakh metric ton in 2021. There is significant potential in the state for agro and horticultural produce including exotic foods, Three of our agro products, that is Naga tree tomato, Naga cucumber, and Naga king chili, are GI tag. Further expansion is possible by increasing per hectare yield and by bringing more area under cultivation, as well as by bringing by increasing the area under central cultivation. All this requires availability of agri inputs and market linkages. Nagaland is also richly endowed with natural mineral resources like oil and natural gas, limestone, coal, cobalt and magnetite. Nagaland has more than a thousand million tons of high grade chemical, high chemical grade limestone in the eastern region and approximately 600 million tons of crude oil besides other minerals. Most of these resources remain unexploited due to lack of investment in mining and related infrastructure. The state government has over the years encouraged development of traditional handicrafts and organic agricultural and horticultural products. As part of providing access to markets, we have developed various indigenous brands from Nagaland such as Nagaland Coffee, Naturally Nagaland, Momken, and Mikey, etc. Brands like these from Nagaland are unique given their connection to the grassroots and targeted at taking our indigenous products beyond the state borders while also generating livelihood opportunities. They could achieve scale with the right partnership and collaboration with experienced companies and entrepreneurs. Nagaland also has a good potential to develop as a major tourist hub. The Hornbill Festival of Nagaland celebrates the rich Naga culture with tourists from India and abroad, becoming a confluence of our composite culture and exemplifying the national pride of unity in diversity. The festival of festivals has, over the years, become a recognizable brand of the state and attracts domestic and foreign tourists. With the help of the Government of India, the infrastructure of the state is getting rapidly transformed. Work is on to connect Kohima 
with the national railway network. The road network in the state is also being modernized and expanded across the state. The airport at Dibapur is also being expanded. Besides efforts to have an airport at Kohima and Heli ports in several other locations. We are also exploring the feasibility of developing waterways through our major rivers. The state government has passed the Naga Startup Policy 2019 in order to encourage entrepreneurship and with the aim to establish Nagaland as a model startup leader in the Northeast region. So far, 59 startups have been registered. The state has four incubators for startups Nagaland Tool Room and Training Center, Dimapur, YouthNet, National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, and Edu Center. In tune with the changing global technology and business environment, the state is increasingly making use of information technology in modernizing and automatic, automa automating government functioning as well as in the delivery of public services. We also aim at generating skilled human resources so as to promote an IT-led economy and generate employment opportunities for our youth. As the Honorable Prime Minister has emphasized the importance of transforming governance and regulatory systems, the state government has prioritized these reforms aimed at providing basic amenities and ease of living for every citizen. Further, the state government is also committed to creating a conducive business environment and we are working on adopting the reforms points in the business reform section plan. The state's commitment to augment ease of doing business in Nagaland has gone a step further with the launch of the single window system to facilitate private investments. The existing laws, acts and rules are also under review for decriminalization of minor offenses and to reduce compliance burden for investors. To foster an ecosystem of national and local company partnership, more of Nagaland's products and services into the national and global supply chain, a draft state logistics policy is also on the handbill. We are truly grateful to the Ministry of Finance for their invaluable support and guidance in conceptualizing the CSR conclave. As part of the CSR and investment conclave, the state government have prepared a shelf of potential projects based on our developmental needs and priorities. These and other projects can be considered for adoption by companies. To ensure accountability and monitoring, the CSR project tracking and management system is being introduced to track and manage all the assets created through CSR funding. The investment component of this conclave is also an opportunity for some of the budding entrepreneurs of the state to make a pitch for their proposals. So here we are reaching out to you to join with us in our journey for the overall development of the state. In the end, I would like to stress that Nagaland being a land of untapped potentials and unexplored opportunities in every sector beckons you with a promise of high returns and growth. It is my sincere hope that your presence here will bring your companies closer to us for lasting and fulfilling partnerships with our people for the development of the state and the nation at large. With these very few words, thank you very much once again for taking time out to come and participate in this historic conclave. Thank you and Jai. To take the experience of CSR, may I call upon Srimati Hikani Chakalu, the founder of UNED, to share her story.
and his cabinet colleagues, Honorable Cabinet Minister Shrinti Bakunu, respected CEO of IRAN, Shri Jamir, and all the dignitaries on the dais, captains of the industries, ladies and gentlemen. I am really honored and privileged to be part of this program to share some of our experiences working with the, uh, with the CSR. But on a personal note, I am really excited to be sharing this platform with the Honorable Minister, who is not only the Finance Minister of the country, but also the top women leader of India today. Girls. Girls and women from across the country draws inspiration from her, and I'm definitely one of them. Thank you very much, ma'am, for all the inspiration. In Nagaland, along with our NGO, we also have other prominent NGOs working, uh, doing commendable work in the state. I would like to mention the names. Elitris Christian Society, led by Dr. Chingmak Chang, working with HCL on healthcare. Entrepreneurs Associates, led by Shua, Social Entrepreneur of the Year 2016, Vichy Dulo, worked with Tana Trust on community-led Mithun project for livelihood and afforestation. We have Neda, led by Senti Mongla Kechuchar, supported by Tata Trust, focusing on improving the quality of lives of the communities. Our organization, we have been working with young people and empowering young people since 2006. We have impacted over 1,20,000 lives in the field of education, entrepreneurship, um, employment, livelihood, and skill development in partnership with the government, with organizations and corporates like IBM, Accenture, Microsoft, Quest Alliance, Goatridge, and Sir Ratan Tata Trust. In our 16 years of work with the corporates, we have two major takeaways. First, unlike conventional projects, when government, organization, and corporates work together in synergy under a common framework, we become, we become more effective as change agents to facilitate development in the state. Which leads to the second key takeaway, when corporates decide to work with us as agents of change, then not only the relationship not only stops at the disbursements of fund, but they bring along with them a whole lot of learning uh, through their expertise in implementing, in planning, in monitoring, in evaluating the projects. And this hands-on experience has tremendously built our capacities. Uh, and to substantiate this, I would like to mention that our organization, along with small other organizations, recently won a World Bank bid uh, for education reforms in the state, and which we competed against big global firms. Um, and I can say, and we will be signing the contract very soon, and I can say with confidence that this could happen only because, this was possible only because of the learnings and experiences on all aspects of project management and delivery, which our wonderful corporate partners imparted to us over these years. I would also like to mention humbly that uh, I was a recipient of the Presidential Nari Shakti Puraskar in 2018 uh, for our work in livelihood, skill development, and youth empowerment. And youth empowerment. This award is a strong reflection and a positive result of all the support of both government and the corporate for giving us the opportunity to search, to serve and reach out to all sections of the society. Such awards are also a yardstick and a milestone for us to reflect on our road and also to give hope to the society. So may your generous, may your generosity henceforth open more avenues and opportunities for agents of change uh, so that we can collectively uh, work towards not only achieving our goals and dreams together but also achieving the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister who has been focusing on developing India and strengthening India vis-a-vis -vis the Northeast. 
Honorable Madam Minister, in April at the Parliament discussion this year, there was a discussion on the CSR fund and when some member of Parliament had questioned whether CSR fund can be made mandatory for the Northeast, the government had replied that this cannot be mandatory uh, and it's up to the board of directors of the companies. As a common citizen, ma'am, uh, we strongly believe that there's nothing that the government cannot do for the larger interest of the common good. Even if one person of 1.25 lakh crore can be made mandatory, even if not directory, then I'm, there, there's going to be an immense impact in the lives of hundreds and thousands of people in the Northeast. Um, Assam is always advantaged, uh, and it also has a lot of PSUs, but the other Northeastern states, the other seven Northeastern states, including Sikkim, we have been really deprived. Um, we, we, we can already experience the love, the concern, and the support of our Honorable Prime Minister, and your gracious presence here sends out a very, very strong message, and we are very humbled and we are very touched by your presence with us. Uh, with your presence here, we are hoping that some programs, policies, and big announcements will be made for the Northeast and for Nagaland in particular. Thank you. And uh, to end my sharing, I would like to share a um, three and a half minute video of highlighting the work that we have done with CSR for our young people who are the reason that keeps us going.
thank you for watching thank you for listening For the industry perspective, may I call upon Sri R. Dinesh, the President-designate, Confederation of Indian Industry, CII. Sri Matinamla Sitaraman, Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs. Neep Yu Ryo, Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Senior Ministers on the Dais, Senior Secretaries of the Central Government and the State Government, dignitaries on the dais, friends from the industry, the CR, CSI fraternity and media. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you all. It gives me a great pleasure to be part of this conclave and I would like to congratulate the government of Nagaland for their efforts in organizing the CSR and investment conclave 2022. CII is very happy to partner with the government in this unique initiative. On behalf of CII, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman. Her astute management of the economy during these difficult times has enabled India to emerge as one of the fastest growing economies in the world and we thank her for her continuing vision and leadership. Thank you, Madam. We also appreciate the huge efforts being made under your guidance for the ease of doing business through the Ministry of Corporate Affairs and we look forward to more such activities in the future. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to the Honorable Chief Minister and thank you sir for hosting the corporates on this occasion and we look forward to partnering with you as well. It's great to see so many CEOs and people from the CSI fraternity joining us today and this shows what the earlier speakers mentioned about the interest with regard to the Northeast and the development of this area being one of the core focus for the industry as well. It has already been mentioned that the Northeast region and especially Nagaland has a resource rich, talent rich pool which I think also should be the focus for us to be able to enable the development of this region. The initiatives such as developing the Sitway port in Myanmar, access to Chittagong port in Bangladesh, improving the road, rail and other infrastructure and development of inland waterways will further strengthen the connectivity of this region with neighboring countries and the rest of India. In this environment, enhancing the investment opportunities and therefore the CSR in the northeastern region will be a strong focus for Indian industry and we will continue to support this. It has already been mentioned that the amount of CSR being spent in this region is quite low, but I would like to stress that investments in CSR go hand in hand and therefore having this as a combined venture or a conclave is something which I think is very important for us to make sure that we work together. We do understand that education and healthcare has been the priority in the earlier years. But I would say that the focus has now got to shift to local development and skill building in multiple sectors. And it is necessary to cover which can be done in locally in Nagaland and Northeast and also prepare the ground for further manufacturing investments to take place in this area. Already the Chief Secretary mentioned that the state is working on the logistics policy and developing a logistics still development roadmap and improving storage facility and connectivity in Nagaland will not only help the local agriculture sector as well as the industries which are based out of local manufacturing here but also pave the way for future manufacturing investments to be taking place here. We are well aware of the various initiatives which have been part of the Gati Shakti projects to improve the connectivity to the Northeast. And as we progress forward with this, I have a specific solution which I will cover in a couple of minutes. But I think one of the key requirements will be to the ability to link supply chains digitally. And that's something where the resource rich Northeastern region, we can work together to make that skill available to enhance this for further trade and improvement here. Already, sir, you mentioned that the services sector is 61% and I'm 100% sure that the logistics sector can help the growth of the manufacturing sector significantly going forward. And of course, this can also be applied even overseas considering the strategic location of uh, this region. 
CIA is proud to partner with the Nagaland government in this initiative and through the CIA foundation we will work on inclusive development and undertake high impact collaborative projects. You may be aware that CIA started or became part of this developmental journey in the Northeast by in 2001 itself when we opened our first office in Kohima and we now have four operational offices in Northeast. In fact, today with the CIA members, we have agreed that we will be soon opening a zonal office in Dimapur as well and further strengthening our presence in Nagaland. Let me go to three specific initiatives which I wanted to highlight. One, we want to make sure that in CII we walk the talk and therefore I would like to propose that we will set up a logistics and supply chain training school in partnership with the CII Institute of Logistics and the Logistics Sector Skill Council and we would come to the government to give us the necessary land which will be about 5,000 square feet to enable us set this up. Further, from, on behalf of TVA supply chain, I am happy to say that we will fund the first 300 students and enable them to be employed, if not in Nagaland, elsewhere in the country, so that we can further improve the employability of this. We will start in a small way with 1,000 students in the first batch, but we will be able to ramp it up as we go along once we see this. Just to give some background, and I think the Honorable Finance Minister is somebody who has been very passionate about this, the current employment in the logistics sector is 22 million. Gati Shakti alone would add 10 million jobs. Over and above Gati Shakti, we are speaking about 6 million jobs being added in the logistics sector. And therefore, we will be actually scratching the surface with a small number of people we will be training. And I see a huge and unique opportunity for the Northeast to be a bed or the training ground for the future, which as I said, will have a rub off effect on this sector as well. Secondly, we are happy to support the government of Nagaland in promoting investments in the state by organizing roadshows both in India and overseas, especially in countries like Japan and Korea, which have had traditional links with the Northeast. From our side, I think you have the diaspora of, I would call it the Northeast people employed in other states within India. I think we should be able to leverage both using CIA as the bridge. Third, we have set up model carrier centers in some states and we would be very happy to partner with this Tamil Nagaland government in to set up a model carrier center as well here, which will help in planning and enabling better employability of the people of this region. Finally, I know that you have identified, proactively identified areas that need CSR support. Towards this, a shelf of, a shelf of potential CSR proposals have been shared with all of us. This curation is something we will catalyze and facilitate so that we can get to tangible improvements which we can make real ground at the, at the ground level and be actions which can be directly implemented. We want our support to be directly linked with outcomes benefiting Nagaland and the Northeastern states. We believe sustainable skill development will lead to employment generation and that's why we are starting with that. We want to make sure that the infrastructure development which is already being prepared for and if I remember right, Madam, it is about 134,000, lakh and 34,000 crores which is going to be spent in Gati Shakti in the Northeastern states. And with that kind of investment taking place here, we believe that investment and CSR going hand in hand together along with this kind of infrastructure development will pave the way for a successful growth of this Northeastern states, especially in Nagaland. Through CII and as TVA supply chain, I am personally committed towards the development of this state and I would urge all my industry friends present here to collectively consider the opportunities and invest both financially and through CSR in Nagaland to deliver long-term value for the communities at large and create a more equitable and inclusive India in which the Northeastern states also flourish. I wish the conclave a huge success and once again thanks for giving CIA an opportunity to be part of this event. Thank you. For the Northeast Regional Perspective, may I call upon Sri Moses Chalai, the Secretary, NEC. Honorable Chief Minister Nagaland, Sri Difu Ryoji, Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Srimati Nirmala Sitaram Manji, 
uh, <coughs> Honorable Ministers of Nagaland, Honorable MLS, Chief Secretary and his team, uh, distinguished dignitaries on the dais and of the dais and also the participants of today's um, conclave. I am <coughs> very happy to be here in the midst of this very important conclave which the uh, state government and the uh, finance ministry has organized this. I would like to give a very brief perspective about the uh, from the northeast region perspective about the investment and CSR scenario. Uh, we all know that much has happened, Madam, uh, in the last recent past, in fact, the infrastructure development in all respect has seen a dramatic change and we all are witness to this visible change that is happening on the ground. Be it roads, aviation, telecom, rail, education, bridges, and various socio, uh, you know, other that, uh, sector activities or initiatives that are happening. Uh, <clears throat> now, we know that, uh, the, and also the 10% GBS, gross budget support that uh, uh, the non-exempted uh, ministries of about 55 of them, you know, it has gone up so dramatic that this year, 2022-23, all these ministries will be investing about 76,000 crores. That is not a small amount. That is about $10 billion. Uh, so much is happening, but much also needs to be done. And one of the, you know, one aspect that has become very glaring is the need for private investment to come in into the Northeast in a big way. Because on one hand, much is happening, but it's not been complemented and it's uh, you know, by the economic transformation and generation of uh, in, uh, you know, jobs that need to happen. Um, <clears throat> so for instance, um, the now, we, I tried to get the figures, but uh, sorry, ma'am and sir, I could not get the exact figure, but like under MSME, in Assam, in the last, uh, between 2016 and 20, five years, it received only about 8,600 crores. Not much in five years. And it is said that the rest of the seven states of Northeast are about the same half of, I mean, uh, equal to about Assam state, seven versus one, not much. If DI, the flow in three years up to March 2022 is about only about $26 million, which is nothing much to write home about, of which Assam received $18 million. US dollars. Total FDI in 2021-22 for the country was around 83.50 billion dollars. That's about 6.2 lakh crores. So uh, it just goes to show that how less investment is happening uh, in, the, in the region. Then coming to the CSR front, in 2020-21, the total CSR for the country was about 25,000 crores, of which only about 225 came to the Northeast. 225? Actually, that comes to less than 1% of the whole CSR uh, that you know, the envelope or the kitty. And out of that, 225, Assam received about 72%. And out of the Northeast share, Mizoram received about less than half percent. And there are some states which did not receive anything also that year. 
Now, therefore, uh, then so much needs to be done. And of course, uh, uh, we surely cannot uh, follow the 10% GBS system and, uh, you know, uh, under CSR. But if we take 10%, then it would have be, should have been around 2,500 CR. But we, it does not work like that. Ma'am and sir, I would like to say that uh, of late, uh, in the last few years, there has been a growing urgency of the need for investment, private investment to bring economic transformation and generation of jobs and creation of jobs. This was highlighted very specifically by Honorable PM in his address in NEC plenary meeting in 2016 where he very strongly emphasized on the need of you know, investment and economic transformation and job creation. The same thing was reiterated last year by Honorable HM, Home Minister, who is also the chairman of NEC, that one of the key emphasize and uh, uh, has to be the private investment. All the states, I come, I mean, I'm in touch with all the states and all of them without exception are now beginning to really emphasize on this and raising the voice. And Nagaland is also surely in this group and already have ceased the need of this and of course for which the state has uh, met this arrangement. And I'm very happy to say that of all the eight states, the, all the honorable CMs are taking the lead. <clears throat> Some few suggestions before I close, uh, I would like to place before ma'am, that uh, for private investment to come, I think they have to be that what we call heavy touch guidance. I mean, they have to be a very strong push. Uh, without that, uh, I think we will continue to, uh, you know, continue to linger in this situation. And for CSR, maybe perhaps what we call light touch guidance also will do a lot of good. And for this um, CSR, for instance, what I feel is that we need, you uh, know, we well, the traditional towards education and some health and uh, some of the uh, very conventional uh, you know, initiatives are important and we need to continue. At the same time, the CSR can be much more flexible than some of the normal government schemes and programs. And therefore, they need to be flexible, innovative and creative focus on economic activities more and more. Say we need to go on a big move towards IT and ITES, where we don't need to get into this physical logistics challenges. And 4.0 industry is one where the Northeast needs to jump into it, you know, which will provide huge job opportunities for the youths. For instance, CSR can seriously think someone can to train about a thousand, you know, gas line pipe, uh, you know, what you call mechanics. Because the gas line pipes are going to go to all the state headquarters and the big towns. But we do not have the such, uh, you know, experts now. We can step into that. For instance, I'm just giving one example. Therefore, in conclusion, I want to say that both investment and CSR in a focused approach will help to usher in economic transformation as thousands and lakhs of youths from the NER are going to different parts of the country. To do what? Many of them just to earn very paltry incomes, salaries, just to keep their bodies and souls together. Nothing much. So therefore, the economic transformation by way of investment and also the CSR, you know, very, very, uh, what you call that, strategically intervening is very, very critical for the way forward. Thank you so much and Jai Hind.
For the address by our special guests, may I request Sri Sanjay Malhotra, Secretary, Department of Financial Services, Government of India. Honorable uh, Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs, the Honorable Chief Minister, Senior Ministers of the Government of Nagaland, dignitaries on the dais, the leading lights of the industry and the CSR fraternity, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to be part of the CSR and investment conclave being jointly organized by the government of Nagaland and the government of India, Ministry of Finance. It is indeed uh, very timely and very relevant for us all to have such a conclave here. First of all, I would also like to compliment and congratulate the government of Nagaland. Over the last few years, they have taken a number of steps and Nagaland state has on the agenda of development made tremendous strides. I was growing through the Niti Aayog, Northeastern Region Districts SDG Index report that they came out in 2021 and I was presently surprised sir, to find that uh, most of the districts of Nagaland were in the leading categories that is the front runner and the achiever categories insofar as life on land, removing hunger, drinking water and gender equality, these four SDG goals are concerned. And so many congratulations to you sir on the various steps that you have taken in this regard. At the same time, there are also some pointers for us. I did find, of course, that on a number of other parameters and goals, especially innovation, industry and infrastructure, there is a lot of scope for improvement. And in that context, organizing this kind of a summit is indeed, as I earlier mentioned, very topical. Uh, Nagaland, as you are all aware, and as the Chief Secretary was pointing out, has tremendous scope for investments. It is land to more than four and a half lakh hectares of bamboo. As was mentioned, there are a number of minerals, whether it is limestone or whether it is mic whether it is magnetite or marble or even coal and crude, but it remains untapped. The potential is huge, but we find
was not so heavily impacted by the COVID as the rest of the world and the country, with only about a 2% dip. And back on that, a 7% increase last year in its GST, as per preliminary estimates, is an encouraging sign. In this context, as has been mentioned, I think all the leading industries are present over here. Many of the leading industries are present over here. This is an opportune time for all of us. It's a good state to invest. So I will also urge all of you to invest in this state, which needs investment, as noted earlier, the per capita income here is a little below you know, the national average. They have set up Iran, they have set up a startup policy, so we have a government over here which is forward looking, which is welcoming, and so it is in our mutual interest to partner with them. And so far as the Department of Financial Services is concerned, we have over here a huge network of banking uh, infrastructure. And compare it with the national average, it's at par. There were some statistics given you know, on investment by my friend Moses, so I'm happy to report you know, insofar as the banking infrastructure is concerned, the number of branches, the number of ATMs per lakh population, per unit population here, man, is at par with uh, the national average. I'm not saying that is enough. It's more than the northeastern uh, region uh, average. Honorable Finance Minister is going to inaugurate four of them tomorrow. In the last few years, I took down the statistics and I find that there is huge growth in all the schemes that have been implemented uh, by the government. The CD ratio here. Uh, has also, although low, has also improved over the last one year by about two and a half percent. And we constantly work with the people of Nagaland to continue in their development efforts. And then I would only like to assure the people of Nagaland, the government of Nagaland, that we continue to work with them in their effort to develop the state. Thank you. It is here that I take the time on behalf of the state for the award ceremony. Now we proceed to the launch of initiatives with award ceremony, exchange of MOUs and launches of the CSR initiatives. Under the vision of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi for Make in India and Atman Nirvan Bharat and for carrying forward visions of esteemed speakers ahead of us, Startup Nagaland has been developing an ecosystem for entrepreneurs and investors. The very first startup competition was conducted for this very purpose. The winner are invited to the stage as I request our Honorable Sri Mati Nirmala Sitharaman, the Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, to do the honors in giving away the first two grand prizes of the startup competition and the best woman led startup. May I call upon our honorable guests to please take the stage and for the first grand prize, Island Low Private Limited to receive the grand prize with three lakhs of repeat of the competition. Ladies and gentlemen, may we all put our hands together for the first startup in Ireland and to be honored by our guests. As I request the Grand Prize Startup Competition winners to remain standing. May I also call upon the best women-led startup, Shiroi Lini, to please come for Naga Ed with a cash prize of one lakh. May we all put our hands together in congratulating and also encouraging our winners. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, and may I request everyone for the group photograph, please. Thank you.
Thank you. You may be seated, please. Thank you very much. As we move on to the launch and the announcement of the initiative thus far, from the list of more than 500 projects submitted by various stakeholders, the CSR donors across the nation have collectively committed to make impactful projects that can stir Nagaland towards a better course of development journey. We thank the donors and their thoughtful projects and invite other willing donors for forging partnership. Now I request Honorable Finance Minister Srimati Nirmala Sitharaman, Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, to do the honors in dedicating these along with other impactful projects to the people of Nagaland in launching the projects. Ma'am.
Thank you very much. And I do believe everyone is calmed and encouraged by the initiatives taken so far. It is here that I would like to extend this invitation to four more companies to exchange and to hand over the MOU to our Honorable Chief Minister Nipirio of the state. May I call upon the respective representative of the companies as I call out on you to hand over the MOU. May I call our Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nipirio to kindly accept. The first to go, may I call upon JK Trust. The next, CII. Clean. And the Northeast Small Financial Bank to do the honors in handing over the accepted and finalized MOU to our respective state. And as we exchange, may I request the respective companies to kindly stand, stay back. Ladies and gentlemen, may we put our hands together. And as the handing over is continuing, may I also request the respective companies here in the conclave to kindly come for the group photograph as I call out on your name and please stand on the staircases which will be led by our officials to meet you. Boeing India, JK Trust, Nabart, NHPC, NTPC, ONGC, to please kindly place yourself on the staircase as we call upon our Finance Minister and Chief Minister to take the group photograph. NTPC, ONGC, IOCL, OIL, REC, NRM, Coaching Shipyard, Doctors for You, VRL Logistics, Credit Access Grameen Private Limited, Access Bank, Northeast Small Finance Bank, Kalpataru Foundation, Sulok International, BPCL, Hutko, PFC, PGCL, Emphasis, Paramount Foundation, Infosys Foundation, Gale, IBM, Kumar Swami Mineral Exports Private Limited, Clean Energy, Selco, Netfi, Rural Electrification Corporation, Astral Foundation, RB Project Aspiration Today to Eternity Foundation. May I request all the companies as called out to kindly please stand on the stage as we take the photograph with our honorable chief guest and our dignitaries on the dais with the chief guest. Excuse me, excuse me. I would like to request our officials to please guide and also the media people for the group photograph to be taken. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, It is here that we look forward to hearing from the voices from the host. As the chief host, may I call upon Sri Nipurio, the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, to do the honors in expressing his thoughts towards the conclave on partnership for strengthening sustainable development, naturally Nagaland.
sincere gratitude on my own behalf and on behalf of the people of Nagaland for your presence here today and all the supports extended. Not only one day, but three days altogether that shows your commitment to the state. We are very grateful to the government of India for bringing greater focus on development of the northeastern region of the country. As a result, not only the government, but also the private sector is looking at the northeast with a fresh perspective. The mandatory requirements of spending for corporate social responsibility by companies has opened up immense opportunities for companies to participate in grassroots development activities while not losing sight of their business commitments. However, Nagaland has not been on the radar of the corporates and the amount spent in Nagaland had remained very low. There is a scope and potential for companies to increase spending in the states tremendously. And as you have come, seen yourself, I'm sure your, your physical presence will also convince you that we are badly in need of you. This conclave would provide the platform for the CSR spending companies to harness various opportunities that Nagaland offers. 
It will not only help companies identify the right projects, but also right organizations to partner with uh, the implementation of the projects. Our objective is, however, not limited to getting companies to spend larger amount of CSR in Nagaland. In seeking CSR investment, the state government is not trying to replace its own development act activities. It is seeking for the innovation and a plus in into the cutting edge tools and resources with faster and efficient transfer requirements of the state. That the partners may be effectively able to source. We are hopeful that the companies will also bring along the spirit of private enterprise, which will help the youth of the state to imbibe the culture of entrepreneurship. As part of this conclave, we are holding parallel track on CSR investments and startups and banks. We are confident that the conclave will enhance our engagement with the private sector and banks, encouraging entrepreneurship between local entrepreneurships and the partner the startup and establishment, established companies across the country, while also improving credit takeoff in the state. As many of you may be aware, Nagaland is a travel state with a unique history and tradition. The Constitution of India has special safeguards that protect the customs, practices, the traditions of the people of Ghana, his unique customs and tradition, and the rich social capitals are the core strength of Naga society. From this tradition have flowed the concept of Village Council and Village Development Board. It has also helped us innovate the unique concept of communitization with the aim of building partnership of the government with community. Our strong social institutions, civil society organizations have helped us deal with prolonged insurgency and political turmoil. We are witnessing continuous peace since the ceasefire for the last 25 years. Government is investing in building infrastructure and improving public services, especially in education and health sector for our people. As a result, we are among one of the more literate states with good health indicator. There are, however, resource and capacity constraints and challenges of remoteness and geographical terrains that sometimes hinder our progress. These gaps are where we hope that companies with their resources, innovations and expertise can help the people of the state. We expect that the companies will use innovative solutions and resources to supplement the government efforts to meet the evolving challenges of public service delivery, especially in the health and education sector and in the remote parts of the state. It is we are lacking our state-owned resources because the financial pattern which agreed in 16-point agreement was withdrawn in the year 1989 and therefore the uh, finance which was to be given for administrative expenses and developmental activities 
was withdrawn. On our agriculture and horticulture products, soil is fertile and so we produce a lot of agriculture products like ginger, turmeric, kidney beans, potato, pineapples, dragon fruits, persimmons, citrus, passion fruits, kiwi, coffee, and tea, which are organic and of high quality. We are part of the global hotspot for bio biological resources with bamboo and other forest products available in plant. With the participation of industries in the right spirit using their CSR fundings or investments, we are hopeful that this can become part of the national and global value chain commodity premium prices those increasing farmers income. Employment and skill development of our talent youth is another important area of interest for industry partnership. Our vibrant pool of educated and talented youth is our most valuable resource. With employment in the government sector security and also changing aspirations, we would like them to have their own successful enterprises where they employ others and contribute fully to the growth of the nation. We have been successfully implementing a few CSRs projects in a couple of districts in the state. I'm happy to note that preparations efforts for these events have resulted in tying up of so much and thank you very much for the CSR projects which have been shown in the slide and also the commitment signed in the MOUs. On behalf of the state and the people, I want to thank all the corporates who have come and who have contributed the CSR and also signed MOUs to take the state development activities forward. A facilitation cell for CSR in Iden which will assist companies in following up on implementation of these projects to meet their regulatory requirements. I would also urge the companies to pick up projects from all region and district of the state in the interest of equitable development. In addition to CSR, we expect participation companies to explore the on depth investment potential of the state in forest, agriculture, handicrafts, education, medical, bamboo, hospitality, tourism, music, and arts sectors. In order to facilitate investors, we have already launched a single window system. We are also working to enable long lease land holding in the state. The state government uh, on the banking front, we are hopeful that the banking track of the conclave would result in more hustle, free credit often from the banks and they would also contribute a bit not only in our development endeavors but also promote our budding entrepreneurs. As I conclude, I would like to uh, especially thank the efforts put in by the Department of Finance Services, the Department of Public Enterprises, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs of Government of India, and the Investment and Development Authority of Nagaland, as well as many state government officials across district and department. In 
putting together this event. I would also like to express my thanks to all the companies, the officials who could attend this event in person or virtually. I also want again to extend my highest gratitude to Sri Nirmala Sitaraman for raising this event despite so many competing demands on her time. In the end, I wish this country a great success and we hope that it turns into a regular event to help us realize our development goals. Thank you, Jai and God bless. It is here on this note, we would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the state and her people to acknowledge and also show our token of appreciation to our Honorable Union Minister of Finance and Corporate Affairs, Sri Mati Nirmala Sitaraman, as our Chief Guest. Ma'am, it is here that we wish to give this token as a sign of saying thank you. May I request you to please stand and also request our Honorable Chief Minister to assist on the site. This is a small gift from us now. The presentation is being carried on a cane basket known as Mekho, and it is in Pungami Dali, and it is used for carrying rice and vegetables, as we adorned you with a traditional wraparound called Sympathy, which is worn by the Al women on formal occasions and festivals. And to, along with that is a cognac traditional waist band called Shenki, made of colorful beads, symbolizing the nurturing quality of women, which is worn during important occasions such as this. And to go with that is a beaded necklace called Luck in Cumulan dialect, with layered, multiple strands bunched together to reflect the symbol of strength and exhibit the artistic hand and wealth of women. And along with that, we would like to add the Naga head men, known as Akutsu Kuka in Seba dialect, which represents the crown of victory, and the earring is a symbol of strength and essence of womenhood. And with that note, we would like to intricately present you with the Lotha shawl called Sukhvasa, which is a symbol of grace, dignity, and creativity of women. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a gift from all of us to our Honorable Finance Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, for our presence here today. And it is here on this note, I would like to request our Honorable Chief Guest to do the honors to address the crowd. Ma'am. and thank you very much for being here today. Minister, Honorable Ministers, invited guests, my officials from Delhi, officials from Nagaland, and most importantly, all the industry captains, leaders, I would like to start with a slightly not so official view, if you will pardon me. Nagaland doesn't get enough CSR. Nagaland is not drawing investors, was what the chief minister's observations were when he came to meet me in March and to speak 
about his concern. Today, I didn't disagree with him then, but I want to highlight today just that one call of the Chief Minister to hold a CSR and an investor's conclave in Nagaland has drawn this entire business leadership to Nagaland. It is just one call, just that one call from the Chief Minister. It was an anxious voice then and I don't want that anxious voice to be heard again. It was, sir, your one singular call for drawing the attention of industry to say that Nagaland should be your natural choice and that is why you have naturally Nagaland as your, you know, very nicely coined It does take a bit of effort. There is no doubt about it. And that little effort from the side of the chief minister is seeing this response today. It can even be better. I'm not denying that. But a response nevertheless. I therefore want to highlight the fact that calls for CSR will have to have some reality check as well. I heard the young entrepreneur who spoke, the lady who spoke well when the uh, program started. Can it not be made mandatory? For which we've given an answer in the parliament. She also went a bit further to say, if the government thinks nothing can be beyond its powers, to make it mandatory. But I'm sorry, you're right. But even without making it mandatory, you have seen the flow of investors who have come here to check it up, to offer money, offer services under the CSR. I'm not evading the question, I'm not evading the point that the young lady has made. But the point I want to highlight is, CSR in many parts of the country is still being pushed on the basis of the board's decisions and as a result of which areas in which they see greater potential for social activity, funds are provided. But at the same time, there are also voices locally which say this company is present in my area, but they don't seem to spend adequately in my own area. And there are areas like Nagaland which don't receive adequately at all. So there are problems in our expectations about CSR. Let's keep that in mind. But I also heard the CII designate chief Dinesh telling us CSR happens when investments happen. So really before us there is a chicken and egg situation. Let investments happen, you'll get CSR. But CSRs don't happen and investments are not even coming in. So, thank you. So, states like Nagaland do face this conundrum. Investments are taking their time to come, but can CSRs not come? And not wait for investments to happen. They didn't wait for investments to happen. They have come here. They have come here from wherever they are, not just to show that they are interested and invested in the CSR aspects of Nagaland. And I'm sure this conclave will be the first stepping stone and there shall be many more who will come, 
many more who will take interest and many more who will find common cause to have greater CSR and also for possibly potential for uh, investments as well. But even in this list of CSR today, we have found greater interest in health care. Health care seems to draw a lot of CSR with their specific niche areas in which they want to spend their money, which is good for the people of Nagaland. And I think that should be encouraged. We should have more people coming in, even if it is for strengthening the primary health care of Nagaland. I appreciate, recognize, and also indicate that that could be one of the ways in which Nagaland's youth can be brought in as a part of CSR activities. I ref I'm here referring to the announcement, announcement made by CII in setting up a training center for skilling with proper certification. And why is that important? The youth of Nagaland are well educated and as the data which was mentioned by the Chief Secretary, it is above the national average, your literacy rate. Your young, about whom I can speak with a certain confidence because I had quite a few Naga students who had come to JNU. They were very well exposed, good and confident and they could study in a national university like JNU with commendable performance. Youth of Nagaland have that thing in them that they're well educated, they carry themselves off very well, they communicate well, they have great strengths. Today India, similarly, marking the 75th year of independence, we heard the Prime Minister also say from the Red Fort that logistics in India is going to be a big play. Where government will invest, private sector investments will also come in. There is an investment pipeline all of which are aiming to strengthen the infrastructure in the country. Existing as well as new, brownfield and greenfield, for which a lot of investment is coming also through the various investment funds which are coming into the country. Now, in dealing with this, in order to get greater synergy of projects which exist, when I say projects, railway station, ports, waterways, seaports, airports, manufacturing hubs, all these exist in the country, newer ones are also coming in. Now how are we going to have greater synergy between them? Are they standing in isolation? Is there a habitable community around it? If there are more requirements for transit between a point to another, from where this hub is located? Is there enough logistics? Is there enough mobility, facility for mobility? All this requires a lot of energetic young people to understand logistics, be trained in it, and take leadership position in this great effort of Gati Shakti. So for that you need young energetic individuals who are going to be able to have the skills that is so required for giving leadership at various levels, at a first layer level, middle layer level, and also the top layer level. And I think, therefore, CII recognize, recognizing that potential in the youth of Nagaland and coming forward to set up such a training place with proper certification will only provide immense job opportunities for youth of Nagaland anywhere in the country. And let me add a bit more here. Without personalizing the matter, the CII designate is also a man who's led the logistics industry very much in India 
and therefore you're hearing it from the horse's mouth as it were. So that is a great opportunity which the CIA has come in at a time when business leaders are here signing MOUs with the government of Nagaland and also for spending the CSR funds. There are a few thoughts which came in my mind based on the kind of little exposure that I've had from the afternoon. I've also had some very meaningful conversation with the Honorable Governor who was here today, who is here today, also speaking about the various things we can do in Nagaland. The millets that you grow, the fruits that you grow, the pineapple that you grow, the ginger, the turmeric, with my little experience as Commerce Minister of the country between 2014 and 17, I can tell you the product can be superlative. The products can be organic. However, you have a little problem in that given the terrain of Northeast, aggregating such pro products aggregating without loss of time from the farmland and finding a market is the biggest challenge. Today the world wants organic products. You are sitting with a wealth of organic products. If that has to be aggregated, ideally aggregated by people belonging to this area so that you can benefit from it, aggregating and storing it, and without loss of time, be able to find a market elsewhere in India or outside. We did attempt something from the Commerce Ministry, and I'm sure it is workable even today. But even better is this one thought about which I did mention to the Honorable Chief Minister, even as I was sitting on the dais, there are some states who have taken up this call given by the Honorable Prime Minister. One district, one product. For instance, states like Uttar Pradesh, which also did not have the advantage of a larger market for their produce, sometime in 2019-20, started identifying products within a district, not to say that product in another district will not be supported, but where the focus is, because I know pineapple for instance is super in a particular district of Nagaland, I'm sure it grows elsewhere as well. Now if you identify a product for each district, government of India has come up with a good plan which gets executed even through the banks to provide common facilities for processing or for packing and those common facilities can be available for all producers of the produce in that district. You also have the advantage of the banks together with the export authorities to bring in digital markets Sitting where you are, you can identify the best price that you can get and ensure that the product is lifted from where it is to the market where it has to go. I would suggest, and I'm grateful that the Honorable Chief Minister received that thought and said he would certainly look into it. Identify for each one of the districts of Nagaland a product which need, need not necessarily be a perishable commodity, it can be a perishable agricultural product or it can be a long term, you know, a product which can stay for longer or it can be a handicraft product, it can be a weaver's product, it can be anything. The best in the district. And once you identify, there are ways in which the union government together with the banks can come help in setting up the primary infrastructure that you would need, bring in the digitized uh, benefits of marketing it and be able to take it further. And in this too, CSR can be of some help. 
Besides this, I also highlight for the sake of the government here and also for the youth of Nagaland that branding is a big deal. Now, why do you have to have naturally Nagaland? Naturally, Nagaland is, of course, there in our minds. But once you start identifying it with a certain logo, with a certain color combination, with a certain kind of image projection and communication, finding the best way to communicate about your states, some specific unique products. There are global markets waiting to lap them up. I can tell you from my experience, coffee in India has always been from Karnataka, Kodagu, you know, a particular district where coffee has been traditionally grown. But when I was the representative from Andhra Pradesh in the Rajya Sabha, there is a hill district called Araku. It's a valley. It's called Araku Valley. The coffee grown there was the first time effort of coffee growers. They were tribals. They grew it in their open lands, being guided by the coffee board and others. But the effort they put to brand it, today Araku Coffee, is a name to reckon with. In Paris High Street, you have Araku coffee stall. I have been to that place. Unbelievable the kind of reception it gets. It's one district in Srikakulam, uh, next to Srikakulam. It's a hilly district full of tribals who have attempted to take the risk to grow coffee, but today it has global market. And I'm sure, therefore, your millet, your coffee, which I've had the benefit of tasting because the Honorable Chief Minister had presented me once one little bottle of it, I think it's fantastic. But you should brand it. I just have a few more thoughts to share with you. Your Honorable Minister for Planning was telling me that majority of the teachers here come from South India. At the same time, I've also heard, not here but in Delhi, that students in Nagaland do require science and technology education facilities. The STEM, science, technology, engineering and medicine, has to have greater facility available here for students to study. So I would think that is one area in which, in order to cultivate greater interest in science, Niti Aayog has a very good scheme, which I have taken to Karnataka as an MP from that state. The entire coastal Karnataka, western part of Karnataka, benefited by setting up in schools what is called an Atal Innovation Mission Projects, the AIM, Atal Innovation Mission Projects, where they set up fantastic science labs in school. And that gets graded upwards in colleges. And that further gets graded upwards as innovation hub in the university which is present in that state. I would appeal to the authorities here, be guided by your Honorable Chief Minister, but Atal Innovation Missions, Atal Tinkering Labs should have come to your schools. You should have had Atal Tinkering Labs in most of your schools by now. At least now, make sure that Nagaland School does get the benefit of the Tinkering Labs at the school level and at the college level and even further afterwards. Some talk about to tourism. I, I would strongly think there is a big potential for domestic tourists to come to Nagaland for homestays, be a part of a Naga tribe's home. I'm sure a lot of youth in India who are very mobile and who would want 
to have some exotic experiences should be invited for a homestay in each of the tribe's house where each one can choose whoever they want to go and get exposure appreciate the way they live you live so naturally you live in a sustainable fashion you know to use natural resources frugally but make a beautiful colorful culturally rich life indian youth from every part of the country should share that experience i would think that is one of the things on which the tourism department in this state can do some innovative thinking and finally agriculture is a big thing here today drones are bringing in greater efficiency into agricultural practices you are able to better map the land better understand the terrain you are also able to better advise the farmers about land's nutrition about the way the crop can be cultivated drones have a great magnetic attraction of the youth i find several of the youth um, getting into drone manufacturing i invite the youth of nagaland to look at the world of drones and see if you can um, contribute to it and i'm sure there are several startups which can share their experience with you on that as well without taking more time i appreciate the chief minister of nagaland for ensuring csr reaches and not in small numbers big numbers to nagaland i appreciate your effort and i'm sure the youth of nagaland will give you great support it might even be worth your while to form a task group of naga youth who can themselves become the brand ambassadors move around the country on behalf of the government of nagaland take some of the officials with you convey the message of nagaland to all the industries seek startups to share their time with you and ensure that you are building the brand for nagaland i'm sure it's a workable idea and the chief minister will give some time to think about it i personally thank each one of the companies industries who have come forward for this csr conclave my particular thanks to companies which have invested their csr in bringing in some kind of a socially conscious facility for nagaland i'm very grateful to each one of you because nagaland has to also catch up and develop for as fast as many of our states india's development cannot be without each and every one of the states developing equally or even better so thanks to each one of you who have come for the uh, physically come for attending and also ensured that you're giving your resources for the csr purposes but even otherwise i think this investor conclave will have to open up avenues for investment in nagaland so thank you very much for having me here i'm greatly impressed by the enthusiasm and energy of the naga youth i wish you all the very best and prosperity to the state this beautiful state of nagaland jai hind thank you honorable union minister shrimati nirmala sitaraman for your thoughts and also encouraging the state and her people it is here on this note i take this opportunity to take some announcements to our audience there will be a special session with honorable union minister for finance and corporate affairs and this is by invitation only so may i request for those who have received the invitation to please proceed later after the program and as you have the program with you i hope you may be guided by the volunteers and the respective officers in charge it is here i take this time for the concluding remarks and a vote of thanks and request shri neba kronu the honorable minister planning and coordination land revenue and parliamentary affairs to do the honors
Honorable Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs, Sitara Manji. Honorable Chief Minister and Honorable Ministers, Advisors, and MLS. Representative from Government of India, led by Malhotra, and the Secretary in EC, Moses Chalai, and colleagues, friends, and our dear President of the CII, Denise, Chief Secretary, Nagaland, Ja Alam, Senior Bureaucrats, Officers, Dear Corporate Representative, the industry captains, the banking representative, entrepreneurs, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are so grateful to our Union Finance Minister for coming here, showing her concern about the state of Nagaland. Ma'am, during the swearing ceremony, also you have come as a defense minister, that means from the beginning you are with us. And a person like you, who have a vast experience, you have come in a short way, you have told us so many things. You are a student of a GNU, and when anyone says that a person is from GNU, then we come, become closer. <laughs> then, also, your experience in the European countries that we have come to know about that, and you are highly intellectual and for which we are grateful to you. And not only that, not that a strong mother, but you are one of the most powerful women as Forbes magazine have given you the title, the 34th strongest woman in the world. So that personality is here with us. We are so grateful to you, ma'am. Ma'am, you have uh, opened our eyes. A state like Nagaland, CSR is something new to us. There are so many, they don't know what is a CSR. And there are few NGOs working here and there, but they find it very difficult because our state was not so familiar with CSR funds. And madam, our state, because of our political issue, we could not participate even two five-year plans during the 50s and 60s. So these are some of the problems that we have so that we could not catch up with the rest of the world. But now, peace is there. 
And we are grateful to Honorable Chief Minister for inviting you. And when you have come, we are so grateful that all these corporate representatives, everyone has come, so many when it was introduced to us just now. We are so great, grateful to you, Madam. You have bridged the gap between the CSR representative, the industrial captain, industry captains, the, and every one of us. And we hope that from today onwards, we will also move into a new world. Ma'am, we are so grateful to you for giving your advice about the agriculture and tourism. We are also trying our best to improve our agriculture system because here anything can grow. So if you ask me what can I grow in Nagaland, it will be very difficult for me to reply. Anything can grow here, except some of the desert species may not be able to grow. But everything can grow. So now, our request to our investors, we please start coming to Nagaland, invest, and there is a big chance for everyone. The corporate, especially, when it was last time, when you were supposed to come, some of them had already reached at that point of time, and then we were having some doubt whether you'll come again. Some people were saying that, is she really coming? <laughs> but now <laughs> you are here with us, and most of them also, last time they have come, they have come again, this is the second time they are coming. So they are all positive, and it's time for us to start working with the bank also. So that we are taking uh, note of what you have uh, given advice to us. Ma'am, your concern is acknowledged by all of us. May the good Lord give you a good health, long life, prosperity, and try to help Nagaland people in near future also. So with these few words, I thank every one of you, those who have come to Nagaland. During your short stay, feel free and have a pleasant stay in Nagaland. God bless. Thank you. So with that, we have come to the end of the day one of the corporate social responsibility investment conclave in Kohima, with various projects being launched by the Union Finance Minister, Nirmala Sidharaman. And the Union Finance Minister, in her opening speech, said that uh, with just one call away from the Nagaland CM to hold a CSR and investment conclave, the entire investors are being drawn to Nagaland. Well, Hornbill TV will be broadcasting the events of day two and day three. So till August 24th. So stay tuned for more with Hornbill TV. We connect. We unite. We facilitate. We make your life easy. From south to the north. From east to the west. From southwest to the northeast. We keep the traditions alive. India Post. One India, one address. We deliver the best.
This headlines is brought to you by दुनिया जानते हैं स्ट्रॉन्ग मतलब माइथन स्ट्रॉन्ग माइथन स्टील निर्माण का मानदन फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर निर्मला सीतारमन आज नागालैंड घूमती से तय लगा तीन दिन विजिट करने नागालैंड का स्पेशल फोकस को ना सीतारमन को इन्वेस्टर और बैंक मीटे पार्टिसिपेट करो और सी एस आर यूनो ग्रेड करो को ही मारे मध्य प्रदेश तथा बीन्ड पुलिस पा तीन जून जर्नलिस्ट और प्रोफाइल केस फाइल खुशे मिशा न्यूज रिपोर्ट पाने का मिसलीड कर एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर एस जी शंकर पर चाइना के कॉल आउट खुशी नाइनटीन नाइनटीज तक एग्रीमेंट दो डिस खड़े जय शंकर खुशी के नाइनटीन नाइनटीज तक एग्रीमेंट हिसाब से चाइना लगा ट्रूप्स खान प्रोहिबिटेड एरियाज खाने पर ट्रूप्स तो वापस लो लो बोले कुंतुताई खान कुयन देश के मनले दिन नाइन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी वन नोटन कोविड रिपोर्ट खुशी एक्टिव केस तो नाइनटी सेवन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एट नाम सुख दिन यूनियन हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री पर जुना दिशे रू इनफेक्शन पर ट्वेंटी सिक्स जून नगर जीवन डेस रिटायर डेट टोल दो फाइव लाख ट्वेंटी सेवन This headlines is sponsored by Dunia jante hai strong matlab Mythen strong Mythen steel nirman ka mandal Hello mo atu jamia apne sath aur mil TV ke news and details Union Finance Minister Nimala Sitaraman at the Mapu Airport punchi she tai nagaland ke tin din kane aaye se Nagaland Corporate Social Responsibility Investment Conclave aur bankers meet ko nu koi made attend kro bole se सीतारामन पर नागालैंड के ही स्पेशल फोकस दिखना इन्वेस्टर बैंकर्स मीट से पार्टिसिपेट कर नागालैंड लगा बिजनेस कम्युनिटी और वुमेन ऑन्ट्रप्रिनियर्स का नुकदे लोक कर सी एस आर कॉन्क्लेव तो नागालैंड सबसे फर्स्ट टाइम लोसे सी एस आर इन्वेस्टमेंट लग गया दे शो कास्ट कर मध्य प्रदेश पुलिस पर तीन ता लोकल जर्नलिस्ट कुंज बिहारी गौरव अनिल शर्मा और एन के भतीली एक इंसिडेंट मध्य प्रदेश भिंड डिस्ट्रिक्ट के लोक पालगा मिस हमसी खबर स्प्रेड क्रिया करने एफ आई आर रेजिस्टर कर डॉक्टर राजीव गौरा दाबू कम्युनिटी हेल्थ सेंटर लगा मेडिकल ऑफिसर पर दाबू स्टेशन ने कम्प्लेन दिया पिछले पुलिस एफ आई आर रेजिस्टर कर चुकी कोई ना जो नहीं अगस्त फिफ्टीन में जर्नलिस्ट कम पा फोर्स वीडियो सेवेंटी सिक्स इयर ओल्ड गिया प्रसाद विश्वा कर्मा हेंड क्राफ्ट पा हॉस्पिटल दे लोई जा लगा शेयर कर चुकी और कुछ कि एम्बुलेंस कान के कॉल किया पिछले पी नहाने में दे फैमिली मेंबर्स पेशेंट के हॉस्पिटल फाइव किलोमीटर तक हेंड कार्ड पा लोई जा चुकी कोई ना कुछ तायदो गवर्नमेंट स्कीम से का बेनिफिशियरी नो होए कुछ ये तो लगा वीडियो वायरल हुआ पिछले सतीश कुमार बिंच लगा डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट पर पूछ टच क्रीन ना कुछ कि ये तो न्यूज़ तो फोर्स है सी और एम्बुलेंस कांगे कॉल क्रिया ना है कोई की ना जनेश एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर डॉक्टर एस जय शंकर पर चाइना के कॉल आउट कृषि नाइनटीन नाइन्टीज तक एग्रीमेंट दो डिसरीगार्ड करने जय शंकर कृषि के नाइनटीन नाइन्टीज तक एग्रीमेंट हिसाब से चाइना लगा ट्रूप्स खान प्रोहिबिटेड एरियाज खान दे पा ट्रूप्स वापस लो लो बोले कुटुताई खान कुरने everybody wants to get along with their neighbor on on reasonable terms you know i mean i must respect you you must respect me so uh, from our point of view uh, we been fairly clear that you know if we have to build the relationship then there has to be mutual respect uh, each one will have their interests so you know we must get up for it and we need to be sensitive to what what the concerns are of the other party so 
any relationship, and you know, it's not just between countries, it's even between people. For a relationship to be built, relationships are a two-way street. Minister of Health and Family Welfare Pa Juna Sheki Desh Laka Lats Tobi Skandali 9,531 Newton COVID-19 Cases or 26 Manu COVID-19 Pa Muru Sheku Igena. Itia Desh Laka Active Cases Kando 97,648 TSA or Dead Toll Count to 5 Lakhs 27,368 TSA. National COVID-19 Recovery Rate Stand Lo 98.59% TSA or Daily Positivity Rate or 4.15% The Record Ru Sheki. Weekly positivity record to 3.59 percent. The answer is Ministry Junaishi. Last two days, Kanta ne 88.27 crore tests conduct kushi kushi. Chadu Sindh Assam Pratinta Imams Jihadi Links Rakya Kane Rescue Ship. Shri Minister Manta Biswa Sama Prakwano Ja Tuidin De Dujun Imam Aro Kingpin Ke Rescue Ship. Bangladeshi De Prat Choi Jun Assam De Jihadi Do Spread Kribble Ahi Ship. Tuidu Karne Government Pray Sopi Banagina Nutun Imam Bahar Pra Aha Kan Local Station De Ahina Verify Kribble Laga Junashi Aro Imams Kan Bahar Pra Aha Kan Karne Register Kribble Websites Banagi Ship Kugina Junagi Ship. आसाम में दो दिन पहले भी हम लोग बहुत ही दो इम्पोर्टेंट जेहादी का साथ जो लिंक है दो व्यक्ति को अरेस्ट किया हूँ एक व्यक्ति एक मस्जिद में इमाम का काम कर रहा था लेकिन ही वाज ए किंग पिन कोई तरफ का उन्होंने नेटवर्क एक्सपांड किया था आसाम में आया था जेहादी नेटवर्क फैलाने के लिए एक गिरफ्तार हुआ है पास अभी भी गिरफ्तार नहीं हुआ है सो so, ये मुहिम थोड़ा चलेगा हमारा जो मुसलमान समाज है थोड़ा सा धर्म का ऊपर आस्था ज़्यादा होता है तो कोई भी आके बोलता है हम बहुत ज़्यादा अच्छा से इमामती करूँगा उन लोग को ले लिया जाता है तो उसमें लोगों का दोष नहीं है लेकिन अभी हमने कुछ एस ओ पी बनाए हों कि कोई अगर आपका गाँव में इमाम आते हैं और आप उनको नहीं जानते हैं तो थाना को इन्फॉर्म कीजिए थाना वेरीफाई कर लेगा उसका बाद इसको रखिए एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर एस जय शंकर पाकुशे की पीएम मोदी लगा फाइव प्लेजेस को दे इंडिया डू नेक्स्ट 25 इयर्स अलग चेंजेस पिछे आने वो लगा कोई गिना कुशे एक ता इवन साउ पोलो दे ईएम जय शंकर कुशे वो कैन 75 इयर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंस सेलिब्रेट करो हम वो दे कंट्री लगा मूड तो बिशी पॉजिटिव और आगे दे जबले कुरिया दिखी पाया से इंडिपेंडेंस डे दे पीएम मोदी पर मैसेज दे दिशे इंडिया का इतिहास पर फाइव प्लेजेस तो अलग अलग जगह इंडिया दे नेक्स्ट 25 इयर्स तक थली बुले। When we complete 75 years of independence, the mood in the country is very optimistic. It's a very forward-looking mood. So it's natural people would think, okay, what did we do in the last 75 years? Uh, the Prime Minister has put forward this idea that let's think about where we will be on our centenary. That between now and the centenary, the 25 years, the Amrit Kal that awaits us. And his message five days ago was that if India and Indians really took five pledges and sincerely implemented it, PJP laga MP Prabesh Saheb Singh wa mapra Delhi laga Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia laga CBI rank ko de tai kuche ke CBI kam pra tai laga naam de lookout circular kriya se kwado slam kri gina chunashi ke CBI laga press 